little try to turn me around Satan tried to turn me around He tried his best to knock me down Started us on our way. He gave me eyes to see. He gave me a ton of talk. And I want to thank him, Jesus, for giving me the strength to make it. Come on, that's your testimony. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for giving me less to walk. Over and over. Say he keeps on blessing me. Over and over. Say he keeps on blessing me. Over and over. Say he keeps on blessing me. Over and over. Say and I want to thank you. And I want to thank you. You bless me. And over, he keeps on blessing me. Over and over, 
And over, over, and over, yeah. yeah. Come on, over and over. Say he keeps on blessing. Over and over. Well, hold on. Some of y'all sitting down like God ain't blessed you like he blessed me yesterday. I need y'all to stand up on your feet and give God the praise that he deserves. Come on, let's try that one more time. Well, say you keep on blessing me. You keep on blessing me. Over, and over. over and over. Say you keep on blessing me. Over and over. over, and over. over, and over say he keeps on blessing me. Over and over. Say you keep on blessing me. All right, this right here we gonna repeat. Say you keep on blessing me. 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 Come on, y'all. Say he keeps on blessing me. Yeah, I say you keep on blessing me. Come on. And he keeps on blessing me. Yeah, I say you keep over and over. Say he keeps on blessing me. Over and over. I said he blessed me on Monday. And he blessed me on Tuesday. I said he blessed me on yesterday. And he blessing you too. Say he keeps on blessing me. Over Say you keep on blessing me. Over and over. else we can be excited about this morning. We can be excited about his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. That even when we didn't deserve it, he still kept blessing us over and over again. And for that, we tell the Lord, thank you on this morning. I said, for that, we tell the Lord, thank you on this morning. Amen. For that, we give him glory. We give him honor, and we surely do give him praise. I just want to thank everyone for coming out on this morning yes, and as we come together to celebrate the name that is above every name. Yes, uh, for the Bible said that at the mention of his name that every knee shall bow yeah. uh, and every tongue shall confess. So it's at the name of Jesus yes, and that we have assembled here in this place on this morning. We are grateful and thankful to God uh, for yet another opportunity and another day uh, to come and lift up his name. Um, I just want to quickly come. We have no announcements uh, on today, uh, but we want to welcome uh, my auntie, Amen. Minister Glenda Duncan, amen, all the way from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Amen. He's coming to share the word with us uh, on this morning, and we're excited about the word that God has given her uh, to give unto his people on today. Amen. Can we give the choir a hand clap of praise? Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Uh, can we give the choir amen, a hand clap of praise? And for coming and, and leading us in song and in worship on this morning. Um, and so we're going to ask that they will come back forth with one more selection. Uh, and then we'll ask that uh, Minister Duncan will come forth. Amen. And give us the word. It's good to see some of my family in the house on this morning. Amen. It's good to see y'all. Just lift your hand. I don't like to call you out, but just lift your hand a little bit. Amen. It's good to see y'all on this morning. Amen. We thank you. And so we ask that you prepare your hearts, uh, prepare your minds. Uh, for the word. And that's that you just uh, come with me quickly in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another day. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity. Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. And we thank you for strength. And now we ask that you will come and sit down in this place. That you will throw your weight around, oh Father. That you will bound every stressor. Oh Father, God, anything that seeks to hinder this service, oh Father. We ask that you will release your will and way in this house. Lord, let your anointing, let your power, let your presence fall, oh Father. Oh God, that you will bound any disruption, oh Father. Anything that's not like you, oh Lord. 
We ask, O oh Father, that you have your divine will and way in this place, that souls may be saved, that minds may be free, that people may be delivered and set free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you know that Jesus is your rock? I say Jesus is your rock. Jesus is your rock. I need you to stand up on your feet. Help us sing this song.
to greet you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. I'm grateful that God has allowed me to come and be in your presence. Amen. I thank you, uh, Pastor Bryant, and all of those who are here for the, uh, the, the invitation, and I'm so appreciative, and I just want to thank God that he allowed me to get up this morning and to make it, because even though I had accepted the engagement, he didn't have to allow me to make it here, but with his grace and mercy, he has allowed me to come. And if you will, I would ask that you bow your heads for a word of prayer. Father God, I humbly bow before you this morning, God. And, oh, God, I'm just a vessel, God, and I ask that you empty this vessel, God, and fill me with your presence, God. Let your words come forth, oh, God, with power and anointing, God. Let me not speak a word that is not of you, God. Let everything that I feed your people come from you, God. And, Lord, let it fall on good ground, God, that we might be able to grow in you, God. Let us hear, God. Let us listen, God, and let us do your will. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 I, I, I'm going to try not to uh, be before you long, but I always do what the Lord says. Amen. So if he says that I'm quick, I'm quick, because I want the Lord to speak to you what he would have you to hear this morning. My scripture this morning is Psalms 143, verse 5. And it says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the works of your hands. How many of you remember the old days? How many of you meditate on, meditate on the work of God? How many of you are amazed at the things that God has done? You know, because God is ever, he is forever doing something in our lives. He's forever blessing, keeping us in, our, in his life. Okay, for a subject this morning, I would like to use, I remember when. Amen. 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 Now, we are talking about this psalm, Psalms 143, and, and David is the writer of this psalm, and he's talking to the Lord because he's in distress. Have you ever been in distress? Yeah. Have you ever been where you don't know where you go? You don't know what to do. You don't know who to turn to. You don't know where to go. Yeah. This is how David was. He, he said he, he's talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm in distress. I need you this morning. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. I remember, God, the things that you have done for me. So, God, I'm coming before you this morning because I don't want you to sit in judgment on me. I want you to help me. I need you. I don't need you to talk about me. I don't need you to put me down. I need you to help me, God. I need you. And he began, as he was still talking to God, he said, God, he said, I remember those former days. I remember the good days, the days when I, I, was, I found joy in you and the things of you. I remember those days. But now, right now, God, I need you to deliver me. How many of you have ever seemed like somewhere along the way you have lost your way and you find yourself in a situation and you're like, Oh, but I haven't talked to God in a while. I haven't been serving God like I normally do, but I need him this morning. So you bow down and you go to him and you say, Father, I know I ain't been here. I know I ain't been talking to you lately, but I need you, God. I need you. This is what David was saying. He said, I, I do all this crazy stuff. You know David did a lot of stuff. David did a lot of stuff. He murdered. He stole. He, he, he did a lot of stuff. But he always remembered God. Amen. No matter what he did, he knew that God would forgive him, so he would repent. Amen. And he wasn't ashamed to repent. Amen. He wasn't ashamed. He wasn't out here putting on no show for me. He said, look, I know I did it wrong. I'm going to go to God and get it right. Amen. So now this morning, if I can just tear it you here for just a little while, I want to talk to you about how we are now and how we used to. Because there's a difference. 
David was crying out to the Lord because he realized that his life wasn't where, where it was because he was what? He was in adverse to God's will. He wasn't in God's will. He'd been doing stuff that he wasn't supposed to be doing. Amen. So what? He was in trouble. He was in trouble. Amen. So you what got David in trouble? He was letting the enemy talk to him. Amen. He was letting the enemy talk to him. But I want to tell you this morning, the enemy has no power over you. He has a power if you allow him in your mind. And your flesh and blood because your flesh and blood is sin. But see that spirit that's in you, David, uh, uh, the devil can't touch it. He can't touch that spirit because the spirit is of God. And he can't touch it. He can't even be in the presence of God. Can't stand it. So whenever you say the devil made you do it, clear your mind. Dress for battle. Put on that helmet of salvation because that's going to cover your mind. The enemy can't do anything with you if he cannot get in your mind. But see, this is what he had done to David. He had done got in David's mind, messed David's mind all up, had him doing stuff he knew he wasn't supposed to do. But then he, then he let, because see, the devil do He'll lead you, and then he'll leave you. <laughs> see, he had left David. And David came to himself and found out, I'm in a bad place. I need to call on God. I need to call on God. See, what, what the enemy had done, he had seduced David with the pride of life. You know, we be looking at stuff. Do you know there's, there's the, the, uh, 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 the lust of the flesh? Amen. The lust of the eye? Amen. And that pride of life. Amen. I want to be. I want to be somebody. That's the pride of life. If you are a child of God, you are somebody. Amen. That's why we need to realize that if we are children of God, if we are a child of God, we are somebody. We don't need man to give us a title for us to be somebody. We just need to be a child of the king to be somebody. Because God don't have no little eyes and big views and all that. He don't have all that. But see, the devil had tricked him. The devil had sweet talk. He said, the enemy has seduced him. He said, uh, you know that God says there's none righteous on this earth. You on this earth, so God know you ain't righteous. So come on. God, don't, God is faithful. He's righteous. He'll forgive you no matter what you do. Amen. Yeah. That's why he told, that's why he told David. So David went on out and did his little thing, and then he found it, then the devil left. How many of you had a devil ever left? Amen. Devil ain't never left y'all. Devil left me. Huh? But I'm so glad the devil ain't never left you because he left me. Let me tell you something, he left me. And whenever I came to myself and realized that I needed God, I began to cry out. Because I know he's the only one. He's the only one that can deliver me. David prayed to the Lord. He said, Lord, he said, don't judge me. Please don't judge me. I just need you to deliver me. I need you to guide me. I need you to show me where I need to go and what I need to do to get out of this situation because I can't do it without you. How many of you know that God did? He, you know God forgave him because he always would go back like that. He always would repeat. And David had many trans, trespasses and transgressions. But what? He was a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he realized that God was a deliverer. He realized that God would forgive him of his sins. So he wasn't too proud. He wasn't too proud to say, God, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. I repent. Don't you know that that same God is still forgiving, delivering, loosing bonds, breaking chains, and saving souls today. Mm -hmm. Some of us need to remember that. Today God is asking you, do you remember when? God says, don't you remember how I took care of the Hebrew boys? Y'all remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do you remember whenever the king tried to feed them his, his rich food and stuff? And they say, no, we don't want to eat that. Be careful what you eat. Be careful who table you sit to and eat. On Sunday morning or Wednesday night, whenever, when there's a church service going on, you better be careful who table you go and sit to. Everybody can't cook the word of God. 
Everybody ain't living on the food that God gives. Some people living on their own food. Better be careful. Be careful. So, and he said, do you remember when Daniel was in the lion's den? He said, that old lion was so hungry. He said, but I, I fed the lion. And he looked at David and said, ain't got no need for you. I'm full. Go on over there and do what you're going to do. Go to sleep, whatever. I ain't bothering with you because I'm full. God already fed him. See, God takes care of his children. Then Shadrach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego threw them in the fiery furnace. Anybody ever been in a fiery furnace? Not a literal fiery furnace, but whenever you was in a place and it seemed like everything, has, all your troubles had surrounded you and there was no escape. But then God brought you out. And you didn't even see how you came out. He just brought you out. And guess what? You couldn't even see no signs of where you had all, had all them problems. Because God set you on how he moved it. He, he, he fixed it. So that's what he did for the three Hebrew boys. They was in that, in that fiery furnace. And whenever they came out, they, they, they smelled just like they did when they went in. You couldn't smell fire on them. Didn't see no ashes. Didn't see nothing. And they wasn't sweating. They wasn't sweating from the fire. God gave them air conditioning. Huh? God said, not only do I do miracles like that. He said, but what about Abraham? Because he was obedient to me, he was going to sacrifice his son because I told him to after he had prayed and, 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 and for a son all these years, all them years. But he was willing to sacrifice him. He said because of his righteousness, because of his faithfulness, he said I provided him a ram in the bush. Huh? How many know whenever you need somebody, whenever you need somebody, that God got a ram in the bush? He always got somebody. He always got something. Have you forgotten? He wants to know. He said, God says, I am he that did all those things. I haven't changed nor have I forgotten my promise to you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You might leave him. You might forsake him. But guess where he is? Where is he? Right where you left him. Because Jesus only go where you take him. If you don't want to take God with you, he'll sit right there. Because guess what? He ain't begging no rides. He don't need to beg no rides. He don't need you. We need him. He said, but do you have you forgotten who I am? Have you forgotten who I am? Do you remember? Have you forgotten when you were sick and I healed your body? Oh, some people think just because they have migraine headaches and they go to the doctor and get some medicine that the doctor healed them. No, that wasn't them. That wasn't the doctor. He used the doctor, but it was him. Because if he didn't put his divine healing in that medicine, you wouldn't be healed. He said, do you remember when you were, you were in danger? You didn't have nowhere to lay your head. You didn't have nowhere to cover your body at night. You didn't have nowhere to sleep. You didn't have nowhere to call home. I stepped in and I gave you somewhere to call home. Do you remember whenever you needed a ride? Nobody wouldn't come and take you nowhere. You needed to get from A to B. I gave you a car. Do you remember? Hmm. Do you remember when you, were, when, when you were surrounded by problems and you looked over here and you tried to, you tried to go to mom? Mama couldn't help you. You went to dad. Daddy couldn't help you. I even heard a songwriter say they went to the preacher and the preacher couldn't help you. When you went to the, they went to the church, they, nobody couldn't help them. You went to all your friends that you've been, for, been there for all the time. Every time they come to you, you can help them. But whenever you need them, they can't help you. But God said, but then you cried out to me. And I came to your rescue. Do you remember? Do you remember? I want to know, do you remember? Have you forgotten? When I reached down in the muck and the mire and I saved your soul. Have you forgotten when I saved your soul? Do you remember how I covered you with my blood to cleanse you from all that dirt and grime that this old world had you covered in? Do you remember that? Huh? Do you remember how I sent my son to down Catholic's cross? 
that you might be able to get, have eternal life, that you might be able to have eternal life. But yet, you don't recognize who I am. Do you remember? You forgot? Do you remember? You know what I remember? I remember whenever I was you. And I used to walk into the sanctuary and you could feel the spirit as soon as you walked into the sanctuary. Sometimes you could feel it when you, when you pulled up on the, on the grounds of the church. You could feel the spirit. Now when you walk in the church, you can't even feel it when you're in the church. They don't remember when. I remember my Aunt Merlis. Oh, my Aunt Merlis. Let me tell you something. That woman when she got up in the morning time, she praised the Lord. It didn't have to be Sunday morning. Whenever she came through them church doors, she came through, she came through praising God, dancing and shouting all the way up the aisle. And she wasn't looking to see who was watching. Only thing she knew is she was focused on God. She was focused on God. See, that's the problem. We done lost our focus. We done started looking to the left. We done started looking to the right. We done stuck around and look behind us. Stop! Turn right and go straight. Keep your eyes focused on God because if you are not focused on God, you're going to lose your way. You're going to lose your way. Focus on God. See, I remember when the saints didn't mind giving, your, giving God a praise. They didn't mind saying they mean. Yes. They didn't mind getting up, shouting, running, whatever. Yes. Because they remembered how God had brought them through. Yes. Many dangers, yes. cords and snails. They remember. Yes. And they praised God because praise is what they did. Yes. See, when they came to church, they didn't come to see what you had on. Yes. They didn't come to hear the choir. Say the yes. song, even go to somebody. Yes. That ain't what they came for. They came to give God the glory. They came to lift him up. They came to give him praise because you've been so good to me. I just want to give you some praise this morning. I just want to give you some glory. I want to give you the honor of God because you've been so good to me. See, I can't remember when. I can't remember when. We used to get together and go clean the church. We didn't have coffin on the floor. We just had them old wood floorboards, but I tell you what, when them people were dancing in there, it sounded real good. That pat pat on that floor, it sounded good. But let me tell you what, you made a mess up when you went in there to clean up. There was all kind of dirt on that floor. All kind of dirt because they done rocked them floors so all that dirt come up out the crevices of the floor. But it was all right because they was praising God. They didn't have microphones. They didn't have microphones to, 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 to lift their voices up. But you could hear them down the road. You could hear them down the road. Singing and praising the Lord. You could stand out in the church yard and still be in the service. Know what was going on because they weren't shamed. They were giving God all that they had. Whatever the Spirit told them to do, they did. If the Spirit said run, they wouldn't pay you no attention because they were running around this, this center room like a track stop. If it told them to jump up and down, they were jumping like jumping jack. Whatever it told them to do, Praise him. Clap your hand. Pat your feet. Just wave your hand. Shake your head and knock. Whatever the Holy Spirit put on them to do, they did it. But now you go in the church for God bid you, God forbid you that you shout because they're looking at you like, what's she doing? What's going on? What's going on? You don't see it no more. You can't even get them to clap their hand. Can't get them to say amen. I don't know if they're not saying amen because they don't know the word. Or they think they're too cute to say amen. I don't know what it is. But I know one thing. You say, you ask and you say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> ask one of them old saints how they do it. Oh, I thank God because he woke me up this morning. They told you stuff like that. Giving glory to God. Oh, yeah. See, they wasn't so blessed and highly favored. 
They knew they were blessed and highly favored, but you could look at them and tell they were blessed and highly favored. Yeah. Now they almost got the world sign on their head. They say blessed. Because <laughs> why? Can't look at them and tell. You can't look at them and tell. Why you can't look at them and tell? Because whenever they out there in the street amongst the world, they look just like them. They talk just like them. They act just like them. But my God is a deliverer. Don't ask them. They ain't going to do it. But let me tell you something about my life experiences, and I'm, on, I'm almost to the end. See, I remember whenever I was a young girl and I was out clubbing. And see, people don't think about God. Whenever we out there, and, and, and even, even before we get saved, God is there. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. If you take time and look back over your life, you will see that he was there all the time. Yeah. I was a teenager, and my friends and I, we was out clubbing. And there was a shooting. And my friend and I, we was like right here. She pushed me, I pushed her. And as we were pushing each other, just when we heard the bullet come between us. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. See, I didn't realize it then, but as I look back over my life and see, I realized that it was God. See, the enemy was trying to take me out so that I wouldn't be able to do what I'm going to do for God. He was always after me, but I didn't realize. I didn't realize that been many times as I look back over my life that I see how God was always there. That's why one of you, I don't mind. I don't mind giving God the glory. I don't mind getting the ugly for Jesus. See, I'm not so good. If you ask me, I'm not going to say I'm blessed and highly faith. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to scream to the top of my lungs. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to give him glory. That's what I do. Because let me tell you something. God don't hide behind no bushes when it comes to doing for me. So I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. And I remember back on August the 18th, 1984. When I was shot close range with a double barrel shotgun. Now you men, some of you women probably know about a double barrel shotgun. You know they don't use bullets, they use shells. And then these shells is packed with a whole lot of pellets. And you know, whenever they shoot, they spray it. Right? Okay, now can you imagine me with a double barrel shotgun, and I'm turning toward Pastor Bryant, and I'm just as close as I am to Pastor Bryant right here, and I shoot Pastor Bryant. What do you think is going to happen? Is Pastor Bryant sure they're going to be dead? Not unless God says to him, right? Let me tell you something. I was shot just like that. And I remember laying there. And the blood was draining, my life was draining out of me. The whole, everything around me was beginning to go black. It seemed like the voices that I heard were far off. And I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for Jesus. Because as I lay there and the life draining out of me, I said, Father. Oh, when I wasn't in the world this time, I was saved. And I'm like, I, I, I said, Father, I need you. I said, it's not so much that I don't want to come home and be with you. But I got children, God. I got little children. I said, yeah, they got a father. They got a daddy. They got grandmothers and they got aunts. I said, but there ain't but one other than myself that can take care of them. That was my sister Virginia. She was in Indianapolis at the time. And I said, but Father, even though she would be a good mother to them, she can't give them the love that I can give them. She can't give them a mother's nourishing that I can give them. My children need me. And I talk to God just like, just like I'm talking to you. This is what I told God. And let me tell you something. I felt him when his hand began to push me back to life. I remember when I opened my eyes and I could see what was going on around me. What's going on? See, I remember when they came in and 
And they told me, they say, are you burning? I said, no, I don't feel nothing. They said, but you're supposed to be burning. You're supposed to feel like you're on fire. I didn't feel nothing. See, I was in the fire furnace, but God was there too. He was in the fire furnace with me. I didn't feel no fire. talking and they were putting blood in me. Two bottles at the time, piggyback me, piggyback me. They couldn't get where, I, where my body would hold the blood in and stop running it out. And I remember this, this lady, and she had, she, had, she had gotten the blood flow to slow down, and she had this beautiful ring on her finger. And they came in to do x-rays and she told them, they said, well you gonna have to move your hand she said, no, I'm not. They said, we can't do the x-ray because of your ring. She said, cut the ring, cut my finger, if you have to. But I'm not moving my hand because I got this blood slowed down to where we, we can do what we need to do. And I remember that. Then I remember the doctor came in and they put me on, but I woke up three days later. And see, because whenever I went under, God was on my mind. Whenever I woke up, I was praising God. I was God. See, God's been good to me. He's been good to me. I remember when. I remember when you could stand on the word of God, when people stood on the word of God. People don't stand on the word of God now. God says that he give us dominion over everything on the earth, but we sitting up here letting Satan lead us around. Is not Satan in the earth? Is he not in the earth? God said we got dominion over everything in this earth. That means Satan too. Stop letting Satan lead you around by the nose. Stop letting Satan getting in your head and telling you what you can't do. Because you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. You can step on the enemy's head. You can bruise it. Because God said so. Let me tell you something. We can do all things through Christ Jesus. Don't ever let the enemy tell you what you can't do. Read the word of God. Believe the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Do you remember? I remember whenever I got shot, I was paralyzed on my left side. Went to the New Rogers and I had a, a lump of pellets that set it on the top of my spine back there. And it looked like a goose egg. And I went to the neurologist and he said, well, we're going to have to do surgery. I said, what's my odds? He said, 70 and 30. I said, in my favor. He said, I know that 30 is in your favor. I said, well, I know a man. Yeah. He said, I said, I'm not going to have no surgery. But do you see me? Yeah. Can you all see me? Yeah. I want you to know this is 37 years later. This is 37 years later, and I don't need no wheelchair. I don't need none. I got life. I got help. I got activities of my limb. I got strength. And on top of that, he told me that, but guess what? I had a baby after that. That's my baby standing right there. If they stand up, baby, let them see my baby. Let them see my baby. That's my baby. See, my God can do anything. But because I stood on the word of God, can you remember when? Can you remember the good old days is what we call them, when the church is on fire? What no quietness up in no church on Sunday morning? What no quiet? What no quietness on Wednesday night, Thursday night, whatever night you had prayer meeting? And God forbid you was having revival. Because you know what? And let me tell you something. We got called. Sometimes the church is right next door, and we can't make it to church. But let me tell you something. Them old people rode a moving buggy. They walk. They rode bicycles. And let me tell you something. We'll come in and say, oh, we're going to be out by 9. Sometime it was in the middle of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They didn't care. They was in there at midnight. And some of them had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning.
morning to be able to make it to work on time. But they did it and didn't miss not one night of revival. Yeah. And guess what we say? Oh, we going to revival. I'm, I'm going to go two nights. I'm going to go Monday night, and then I'm gonna, I think I might go Thursday night and Friday night. Or something. <laughs> they were there every night. And guess what? They wouldn't make it. But when they church, they were there on time. Because guess what? They were going to open up the service. People used to praise different back then. They believed different back then. They understood different back then. See, God has brought us from so far. He has given us so much that we think we don't need to praise him no more. We think we don't need to adhere to his word no more. Oh, we got it made in the shape. No, we don't. You are just as far away from heaven as you can possibly be. You need to remember when. I just stopped by today to reminisce with you just a little bit. To remind you of how it used to be. But see, God is not a used to be God. He's a still is God. God is still God. We need to reverence him as such. We need to seek him as such. Amen. Amen. So let us not just remember how it was back then. Let us go back to our old time ways. Let us kneel and pray. They used to talk about people because their knees were so black, but it wasn't because they weren't washing their knees. It was because they stayed on them so much praying. And they didn't just pray for themselves, they prayed for everybody. Everybody talking about COVID. Did you ever think to pray to God? Hmm? We got Bible told us. Told them the Bible and you ask them, they look at it, they, 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 where is it at? They don't know Genesis in the front, they all in the back. Bible told us. What good is carrying the word if you don't know the word? If you are just going to carry the word, let it be you carrying it in your heart, not you carry it as a book. That's the way you carry the word. You carry the word in your heart, not in a book, and not know what's in it. We need to talk to God. Talk to God. On a regular, not just when you need him, talk to God. Talk to God every day, all day. Talk to him like he's your friend, because he is the best friend you ever have. Talk to him like he's your father, because he is. Talk to him like he's your brother, because he is. Talk to him. Read his word. Learn his word. And take his word and it's meaning to what, and what it means. If you don't understand what it means, what did he tell you? Talk to the Holy Ghost. Because he's your teacher. He's your God. See, God ain't a used to be God. He ain't a used God. He's ever present. Ever present. He knows everything. He just needs you to talk to him. He already knows. He just needs you to talk to him. Because there's a difference whenever he hear it come out of your mouth. Pray for ourselves. Pray for the whole world. But remember, remember when. Because whenever you remember when, you'll get your Bible and you will see how and you will do the will of God. Amen. Amen. closer to him. If that is your desire, if that is your need, then we can help you right now. We can talk with you. We can, we can teach you how to assess him. If that is your desire, if that's your desire, we are asking that you come. Come now. Because you know tomorrow is not promised. Everybody says tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. But do you know that before tomorrow comes, it turns into today? Hmm? Do you know that? 
maybe for some reason you feel that or you have lost your place with God. It seems like you seem far away from God. It seems like he's out of reach or he's right there and you just can't stretch out enough to reach him. You can come and we can pray with you because you know why he's ever present. It's your mind. It's your mind. But God is. He's not was. He's not a has been. God still is. He's ever ready to accept you into the fold. Because he watches over you even though you are not trying to do what he has tell, told you to do. Because I know you're hearing it. I know you hear it. But if you hear him, answer the call. Answer the voice. Do what he tells you to do. It's in your best interest. It's in your best interest. Because there's coming a time when you won't be able to call and he answers. In the book of Revelation, he talks about how we're going to cry out to him and he's not going to answer. He's a God of second chances. He's got a more than second chances. But whenever you have lived and he has given and he has given and he has taken and he has given and he has taken, there comes a time when he says no more. Don't wait too late. Don't wait too late. Tomorrow is not promised and it's not even promised that we get home from this sanctuary this morning. Amen. Now is the day. Now is the time of your salvation. It behooves us to be ready when he comes. Amen? Amen. But if you will, if Pastor will go to his offer prayer, if you will, if you just want prayer, you can either come to the altar, you can rest upon your feet, and we can pray together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, because we are here today, God, and we are looking up to you once again, God, and we are crying out, God. Oh, God, because we know that we need you, God, and we have situations and we have ailments, we have issues, God, and we realize that you are the only one, God, that can deliver us and set us free, God. You're the only one that can heal us, God. You are the only one that can comfort us, God. You are the only one that can allow your peace to give us a peace beyond all understanding, God. You are the only one, God. And we need you right now, God. We need you, God, like never before. So much is going on around us, God. But we know, God, that you are here. And God, we want to thank you this morning for being here. We want to thank you, God, for being a healer, God. We want to thank you for being a deliverer, God. We want to thank you, God, for when we need a miracle, God, you are a miracle worker, God. We want to thank you, God, when you will in need, God, that you are a provider, God. We want to thank you, God, because you are a promise keeper. Every promise that you ever made, God, you will keep, God. And we are so grateful, God. We are asking, oh, Heavenly Father, that as we leave this sanctuary, God, that you will go with us, God. Continue to keep us covered with your blood, God. Continue to keep us in the pavilion of your wings, God. Continue to keep us, oh, God, that no hurt, harm, or danger will overtake us, God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, God. Continue, God, to bless this house, God. Bless the pastor of this house and this family, God. Bless this house, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless them, God. Elevate them in your name, God. Keep them in your word, God. Keep them low and humble, God, that you can use them, God. Keep them looking up to you, God, because you are their source, God. And God, let us all never forget that you are our source. You are our source, God. You are the river of life. You are our blood. You are our water. You are our food, God. We want to say thank you, God. And all things that we ask, God, we declare and we decree in the name of your son, Jesus, that it is so. And the children of God say amen. amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Amen. We thank Minister Duncan for that word. I remember. Amen. We pray.
pray that the Lord will continue to bless her, continue to strengthen her, that everything that she has poured out on this morning, that he will pour back into her life. And we thank you uh, on this morning uh, from traveling all the way from Jacksonville to come and share the word. Uh, come on, can, can, we, can we give a one more hand clap of praise for the Lord on this morning? that she will come back uh, and close us out uh, for this morning's service. Amen. Messing up on your feet. May the grace of God, our sweet Lord and Savior, continue to abide, root, and keep us until we shall meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. You are dismissed. Amen.